This is Wickham Sound. Hello everyone and welcome to the latest instalment of The Art Show on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. This is the local radio show where we cover arts, entertainment, uh, music, writing, poetry, performance, dance, whatever it is, we try and cover it. We have a different guest each week. We have a weekly episode of The Rye Light Zone where we have short stories, poetry and other performances. And we also have a weekly album review from Twanglin' Jack Ford over in the Elk Shed. I'm your host Dane Cobain, you can email me here at the studio on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk that's d-a-n-e dot c-o-b-a-i-n at wickhamsound.org.uk and I particularly want to hear from people who might have news they want to share on the show anyone who wants a shout out and also potential guests as well so feel free to reach out to me there you can also find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound and you can listen again on Catch Up we're repeated Monday nights at 11pm here on Wickham Sound we're also available on iTunes, Spotify, Buzz sprout wherever you go to get your podcasts so we're going to jump right on into this week's installment of the rye light zone so last week we listened to part one of a stone's throw which is a short story that i wrote based uh, over in west wickham and it's uh, based upon a local ghost story so we had part one last week we're going to listen to part two this week it's read by Susie DeMarco so thank you Susie for getting involved and obviously if you've missed last week's show or if you just want to refresh it you can listen on catch up on uh, iPlayer, Spotify, uh, iTunes all of that good stuff so yeah Stone's Throw part two my lodging it is on the cold ground she began her voice wavering as she strained to hit the higher notes. And, oh, very hard is my fare, but that which troubles me most is the unkindness of my dear. Yet still I cry, O oh, turn, love, and prithee, love, turn to me. For thou art the man that I long and alack what remedy her face flushed and she readjusted her dress clearly uncomfortable on the receiving end of dashwood's intense blue eyes dashwood smiled at her and said i beg of you please continue suki paused for a moment and took in a lungful of breath before continuing I'll crown thee with a garland of straw then, she sang, and I'll marry thee with a rush ring. My frozen hope shall thaw then, and merrily we shall sing. Oh, turn to me, my dear love, and prithee love, turn to me. For thou art the man that alone canst procure my liberty. I believe there's one more verse, my girl. I, you speak the truth, Suki said. She raised her voice a little and continued. But if thou wilt harden thy heart still and be deaf to my pitiful moan, then I must endure the smart still and tremble in straw alone. Yet still I cry, O oh, turn, love, and prithee, love, turn to me. For thou art the man that alone art the cause of my misery. When Suki finished, there was silence. Then Dashwood began to clap, breaking the silence. And then suddenly everyone else in the Georgian Dragon was clapping too. It started slow, then swelled and then overflowed. It wasn't unusual for Suki to sing, but it was unusual for the punters to take an interest. Bravo! Dashwood cried. Marvellous! Fantastic! Spectacular! You're too kind, good sir. Sir? Bah! By this time, Dashwood had finished his food and was towards the bottom of his second cup of brandy. Thomas Keane was watching on impatiently. The meal pleased me, Dashwood said, but your company pleased me more. Alas, I must move on. I'm London-bound, 
and there are men in the city that are desirous of my company. Suki? Suki, Suki, I am pleased to have made your acquaintance. And with that, Charles Dashwood quaffed the rest of his brandy, doffed his cap at the other drinkers, and took his leave of the Georgian dragon. Suki was left to clean his table. Then her brother sent her down into the cellars to bring up more firewood. The fire was blazing, and the hearth already held more wood than the fire needed. It wasn't a necessary task. It was brotherly punishment. And while she was down there, the boys made their plan. "'Snooty Miss Suki,' said George Barber. "'Too good for the likes of us,' says she,' Smith added. "'I say we teach her a lesson,' said Baker. "'Yes!' Barber said. But how? We write her a letter, Smith said. We send her a message from the kindly Charles Dashwood, inviting her first to the Hellfire Caves and from there to London. Nay, Barber said, your plan can never work. What know you of the world of letters? Tis true, Smith replied. I'm not a scholar, but Baker is. James Smith and George Barber turned their troubled faces to Harry Baker, who had a glint in his eyes, and who was emptying the last of his ale into the ever-thirsty maw of his mouth. <coughs> "'Bring me paper,' he said. "'Bring me a quill and some ink. Bring me ale and cheese and bread.' "'Not here, you fool,' Barber said. "'Let us away. We'll write the note at my house and then have my sister deliver it.' And so the plan was formed, and sure enough, less than an hour later, little Cathy Barber had braved the winds and rain, under threat of a bruised arm from her brother, to deliver the letter. As instructed, she handed it over to Suki, who was mopping down one of the tables with a piece of rag. "'A letter,' she said incredulously. "'For me. Pray, tell me who it's from.' But Cathy just shook her head and scuttled out into the night." Suki was illiterate, but there were others who weren't, and an old man who had sat quietly in the corner, smoking a pipe and drinking his mead while staring off into the distance, was kind enough to do the honours. "'Let me see now,' said the man, shifting his position to hold the letter up to the flickering light of the candles, which Suki had relit after Cathy Barber had taken her leave. "'Ah, yes, I have it. What does it say?' "'Patience, dear,' the man said. Then he cleared his throat, held the letter up to the light again, and began to read. "'It says, "'Suki, my dear, I find your voice enchanting. "'It won't leave my mind. "'Your natural beauty is like a ray of light in the darkness. "'Your hands are as delicate as bone china, "'and you smell more heaven-sent than the fragrance of foreign lands.' I myself am no masterpiece, but I have wealth and status. I can show you the world, if you'll let me. I'm asking you, Suki, to become my wife. If your answer is positive, meet me at the mouth of the Hellfire Caves at midnight in your best dress. My coachman will bear us hence to London, where we shall be married. Yours most affectionately, Charles Dashwood. When the old man finished reading, Suki dropped to the floor in a dead faint. She was woken by her brother, who was applying a damp rag to her forehead and muttering a catechism beneath his breath. When she awoke, she sat bolt upright and a hand flew up to her mouth. What is the hour? she demanded. Why, it's an hour until midnight? her brother replied. Only an hour, Suki said. Then I must prepare at once. I don't know about this, Suki, her brother said. I have half a mind to stop you. You just try, she replied. And then she flashed him a look of such ferocity that he backed away a half step before he caught himself. He opened his mouth to say something and then closed it again. That's what I thought. Nothing can stand in the way of love and so Suki dashed away to the house that she shared with her brother, their father and their elderly aunt, 
a spinster who was already asleep, and who would remain unaware of her niece's fate until she woke the following morning. Suki washed her face in the pail of water, dragged a comb through her thick, unruly hair, and then took her best dress out from where it lay in a wooden chest. It was a beautiful dress, one that she had inherited from her late mother, and which her aunt had helped her to modify to suit her smaller stature. Soon, from fine white silks, the material alone would have cost her several months' wages from the Georgian dragon. No one in the family seemed to know where the gown had originally come from, and that just made it all the more magical. At the appointed hour, little Suki headed back out into the cold and wandered along the lonely dirt path that led to the caves. The wind was still howling around her, and while the rain had stopped falling from the sky, it still remained in great puddles that she struggled to skirt around in the darkness. From somewhere in the distance, a dog barked. It was at the top of the hour when she arrived, and there was no sign of anyone else in her immediate environment. That was part two of A Stone's Throw, written by myself, Dane Cobain, and narrated by Susie DeMarco. You're listening to The Archie on 106.6 FM, Wickham Sound, and it's time for a little bit of music. Shout out to Sam Pritchard, who runs uh, Wickham Art, and has had various different installments. He's done Born End Art as well, and uh, some other local places. And uh, he's also a filmmaker, or like he shoots concert footage and stuff. So um, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, at youtube.com forward slash Dane Cobain, then you can see the performances here, but we're gonna share a, f a, f a bunch of Sam's recordings of some local acts. So we're gonna start with Mostyn, and this is them performing Anarchy live at the Antelope. This next one's an original, it's called Anarchy. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
Are you a volunteer helping out during COVID-19 or thinking about volunteering? Volunteers are vital to the COVID-19 response and the local support has been amazing. Almost 2,000 people signed up to help our communities via Buckinghamshire Council's website. The Bucks Volunteer Matching Service is placing them in a pool of volunteers ready to be matched with volunteering roles as needed over the coming weeks and months. Community Impact Bucks has a wealth of online resources to help you find volunteering roles as well as advice on how to get the most out of volunteering. Check out our online training on safeguarding and telephone befriending. Read our guidelines around shopping for others and find out about DBS requirements. For more information, visit communityimpactbucks.org.uk or email volunteering at communityimpactbucks.org.uk. Calling all charities or community groups. Local charity Community Impact Bucks is here to support you. Whether you are an established charity or you have formed in response to the COVID-19 pandemic, we can give you tips on how to secure funding, advice on how to run your organisation, ideas on how to recruit volunteers and much more. We have a dedicated online resource to help charities and groups during the pandemic, including resources for local community response and daily emails with the latest updates. If you need volunteers or for one-to-one -one advice, we can help. Go to communityimpactbucks.org.uk and follow the link to COVID-19 advice and guidance or contact us on support at communityimpactbucks.org.uk. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. Through the wind and snow Come a time I know You'll be laughing at me do you catch my eye, light me up inside, now you're singing to me. Till forever after, we will light this reverie. Just one look, just one smile, just a step at a time. We are sunshine, we are free. Till forever after, you are beautiful. This time is moment, you are beautiful to me. She said she had an eye on me, and you she reckoned you would make it through. And over the counter, we were rolling in the laughter, get caught up in another chapter. In between the rains and the champagne banter, till forever after, we will. Right this reverie Just one look, just one smile Just this step at a time We are sunshine We are free So forever after You are beautiful And this time, this moment You are beautiful To me so beautiful to me oh, So beautiful to me And in the times to come When all is said and done We'll be alright, you'll see We take the colors of the day And light it up in grand display Living on the love Forever after we will like this reverie Just one look, just one smile, just this step Out of time we are sunshine We are free So forever after you are beautiful And this time this moment you are So beautiful to me Oh 
Korean music live at Ystream Studios. I'm not sure what the song's called, but um, I love Korean. She's great. You'll see her at any of the open mics once we once we get up and running again. Once society is back to normal. Before that, we had Anarchy by Mostyn, and that was them performing live at the Antelope. My name is Dan Cobain. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound, and I am here with this week's guest, who is local photographer Mark Page. So. I guess the main thing I want to talk to you about, well, there are a few things actually, but um, mostly we, I want to talk to you about uh, photography. So um, do you remember how you got your start in photography and your first photo shoot? My dad um, has always been into photography. We had a dark room at home. Um, mm-hmm. I joined the school camera club, learned photography. And really, as soon as I left school, uh, I got a job, um, put some money in the bank, got a credit card and bought myself a decent SLR camera. So from 16, 17, I had, I had a camera um, and was just recording things that I saw around my hometown, buildings mainly, buildings and cars. Mm-hmm. So whether you call that a photo shoot or not, I don't know. My book <laughs> is all about just the buildings and people around Wickham really, not, yeah. not, not really a photo shoot. It's just I record what I see. Yeah, that's fair enough. And mentioning um, buildings, I know one of the things that you've sort of talked about here and there is, um, you know, you shared photos of buildings that are, you know, no longer there and stuff because you uh-huh. kind of document the the changing uh, side of things. So I wondered what are some of those buildings that you've photographed in the past that are now no longer there? Um, I did a whole project on pubs, uh, mm. photographing pubs because, um, you know, I understand they were shutting down. So I I photographed as many pubs as I could. Um, the changing faces of Frogmore, uh, Desborough Road, totally changed with the whole of Eden project. Um, and all the new works by the gas works and the football ground, totally unrecognizable. Now. And lots of knots around the Desborough Road area, which is just totally changed beyond belief. Yeah. So oh. um, that's it really. Anywhere I heard they were knocking down a building, um, I'd try and photograph it. Yeah. I mean, why why did you do that? Was that to sort of just, I guess, to document it before it disappeared? <laughs> yeah, uh, again, I've really got my dad to blame or thank for that. Um, I'm actually 60 next Saturday. Fantastic. So I've been photographing for most of my life, as I said. My dad's over 80. And I said, he always had a camera. And he always said to me, you should photograph that building because one day in the future, future they won't remember it. They won't know what the town was like, they won't remember that building. Um, but it, but he, he recalls, he said he wished he had done it when he was younger. Um, because, you know, so much of what he remembers about Wickham gone before I was even born. So, you know, an Eden project, Octon, maybe the biggest, biggest impact in Wickham. So yep. that's it really. I just wanted to, re- it's a photographic scrapbook of, of, of memories really. Cool. And um, another one of the projects that you've worked on was your your Faces of Wickham project, which was, I guess, about documenting the faces that pass through the town as well. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about uh, the Faces of Wickham project, where the where the idea came from and sort of where it took you? Yeah, um, I'm blaming my dad a lot today, but mm. <laughs> I said he's 80 odd years old now. And he said in his day, um, everyone knew everyone. You knew the yeah. local baker you knew you know the ironmonger um you knew the milkman and he said today he doesn't know anyone he doesn't even really know his neighbors down his street mm. and i thought <clears throat> there's so many characters in wickham that i see day to day really interesting people but who are you and mm-hmm. um but with a camera i could go up to that person and say that can i photograph you why uh, you just got a fascinating face mm. interesting face and um 
is something I want to record in history that people can look back at. I remember in 2000, and I think I started this in 2016, 2017. Yeah. Remember when those people were walking down the street and, you know, who were they? And I've yeah. met and made so many friends through the project. Yeah. Um, it literally was going up to people in the street and saying, would you let me photograph you in a pop-up yeah. studio in a local venue next Saturday? Yeah. You know, no. I had nearly 200 people turn up all together, so... Cool. And um, how has your photography changed like since COVID? Because obviously it's a lot harder to photograph people now, I suppose, isn't it? So, yeah, I mean, yes, that has changed. I mean, COVID has totally, totally changed. Um, <clears throat> there's several sides of what I do. I do photograph buildings. I photograph nature. Um, I photograph basically anything. I'm, I, I can photograph. I'm, I've been making model tanks, believe it or not, during lockdown. Yeah. <clears throat> and I've been photographing those models um, and trying to make them look as realistic as I can in photography. Some of the people are saying, I honestly didn't know that was a model kit. It looked so yeah. real. So combining my modeling skills with my photography skills, it's just kept me occupied until, fingers crossed, soon we can get back out and start photographing people again. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's interesting because I think... Uh... A few people were having a discussion on one of your photographs where they were saying, because you'd, you'd shot it in uh, black and white or grayscale, yeah. and uh, people were saying, you know, it, I think you were saying it looks more realistic somehow, just because we're all so used to seeing black and white photographs and black and white video footage, uh, you know, from the se Second World War. Yeah, I think that's, that's totally true. 99% um, of what you see of the wars is always in black and white. And yeah. somehow it... For my generation, it doesn't seem real. It doesn't seem right that 16, 17, 18 year old people were real people going out and fighting wars. We only see films of it. Yeah. And those films are black and white. And I think somehow it allows you to move away from the truth and become a Hollywood scene rather than real life, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's why I think seeing it in black and white, it, it seems more believable than seeing it in yeah. color. Yeah. And what, like, because I mean, I think that's really, really cool. Like, I really enjoy watching the progress you make with your yeah. with your model. Um, and I guess it requ requires some similar skills in a way. I suppose one of them is like attention to detail because you've got to make sure every, you know, every aspect of it's right. Uh, even with you, so what's the the scale? Is it one in one in 35? One, one 35th scale. Yeah. Which means in a modeling scale, um, a foot is about eight millimeter. Right, yeah. And then because so a I'm... model tank is somewhere around about 100 mil, 150 mil long. Yeah. But you know, you've got to try and get the detail into that. Yeah, and and because you've made like the uh, the scenes as well. Um, like yeah. one of the, you made a, a you know, a puddle, for example, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> and um, but he, all those obviously you've still got to get the scaling just right as well. So um and again, as I say, like things like the colours of the tanks and stuff like that, you've got to make sure that it's all historically accurate and stuff. So, cool. Yeah, well, um, there are people, you know, there are some very, very, very good model makers out there. Um, uh, some of them, they're, they actually call them rivet counters. You know, have you got the right number of rivets around that tank hatch? You know, you, you should <laughs> have 12, you've only got 10. You know, the detail people go into. But I, I enjoy it as a hobby. It's yeah. something that, because I can't photograph them, it gave me a bit of a hobby, something to do, but also to put my creative and artistic skills to it. Um, the puddle, you actually talked about that. I've actually made, well, I'm making a YouTube video of how I created it. Cool, it's yeah. actually made on an eight, eight by 10 um, photographic frame from Wilkinson's. Nice. So I built the whole thing for around about four or five pounds. So I just want to do a tutorial on how easy it is to do. Yeah, yeah. And because um, you mentioned, like, potentially you'd be up for, like, I don't know, ex exhibiting the the models, I guess. You, you probably don't have enough to do a full exhibition, I guess, do you? But um... Um, Well, funny enough, there seems to be lots and lots of closet modelers out there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Since I've been putting on Facebook, I've had loads and loads of my friends saying, oh, I've been making those, but, you know, mm. is it, is it, I won't say childish, it's a bit immature and we've just been doing it for a bit of fun. And they said, look, if you can get an exhibition, I'll come along. I'll bring mine along. So mm -hmm. I reckon I could get six, eight people along with eight, ten models each. So we could get right. a display on. And I think it'd just be good to show people what we've been doing through lockdown just to keep us yeah. occupied and when we can't work, you know. Yeah. 
I mean, I suppose you could even do something um, sort of later in the year along along in like November. You could do something along with like the Poppy Day fundraising and stuff like that as well, which which could be yeah, quite cool. Yeah, we mm. could do that. Um, and so and if we did do an exhibition, I'm sure we could do, you know, a craft demonstration or so if we did yeah. so maybe at the art center yeah yeah you know, have some models there but also do a demonstration of how you anybody could do this with um things laid around the house you know yeah yeah for sure cool so um moving back on uh to photography um and again obviously quite a lot of your work is sort of grounded in the sense of place and particularly grounded in the sense of high wickham you know mm -hmm. um what are some of your favourite places to photograph? I, I, I still would say go back to Desver Road. It's yep. one of the few places in Wickham that has still got some historic buildings there. Um, I really, really hope they don't develop it further. I hope that they put some money in to, to um, renovate the area, but not destroy it. Um, I heard this week they're knocking down the carrot, carrot and coriander down Gordon Road plans knock down three old shops there. You've got a hairdresser's, a little fruit and veg shop and um, a grocery store that's been there, well, since Victorian times. They're just gonna, you know, latest thing I heard, they're gonna smash them down and make them into flats. Mm. Um, so that's sad. Nags Head, very sad. Obviously, a lot of musicians around Wickham, we lost such a historic venue. Yeah. That turned into a hotel and flats again, so. Um, I don't know, really. Anything I hear where, as mundane as it seems, a house, a shot, if they're knocking it down, I try and photograph it because it'd be gone. Yeah. You won't remember it. Once it's gone, yeah. it's gone. Yeah, true. Um, so what would you say, like, what makes uh, a good shot? Um, I, I, is that, is, is there, are there any generic tips that you could, that you could share with us, maybe? Um, often it depends. I would say it's, it's attention to detail. Um, yeah. Look, don't look at the subject possibly, look at what's around the subject, what could distract, what, what was in the picture, which, um, you know, it could be, I don't know, an old coat on the floor, it could be something rose on the floor that you don't actually want in the photograph, or if you want to take an ageless photograph, make sure maybe there's no cards in it which date the photograph. Look outside the box is all I say, you know, yes, yeah, I want to take a photograph of that person, that building, that car, whatever, but look what's around it, which would distract you away from the subject you're looking at. Yeah. And um, work with, not to go too technical, but depth of field. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to be in focus and what do you want out of focus? You use cool. a very, very shallow depth of field. The, the thing you're actually focused on will be really crystal clear, but a background will go slightly blur. Yeah. That's one of my styles I use. Yeah, cool. Um, do you do much like post processing, and and how important is that as a, a skill for photographers? Things like photoshopping and right. <clears throat> the two big camps on this, whether you're a photographer or a photo artist. Mm -hmm. um, I try. I mean, I've actually photographed you for the Faces of Wiccan thing, and as you know, I shoot. I, I take the photograph I want. I try not to post process. If I want a black and white photograph, I shoot in black and white. And if I want it high contrast, I'll make sure that I'm using a grainy high contrast setting on my camera to get that rather than, um, I've heard it said before, take a bad photograph and then try and make it good in Photoshop. There's no mm. such thing as that. If you want a good photograph, take a good photograph. Yeah. You don't really need much editing. The only thing I really do in Photoshop is crop and maybe put a watermark on. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm not photo artists I shoot what I see yeah yeah no that's true and as you say uh, I remember when you when uh, you photographed mm. me you literally as we were there you'd take a few shots and then you'd bring up the shots on the camera and like share them with the model and uh, yeah. and it was it was quite a collaborative process I found as well I mean do you try and do that when you're photographing people and... absolutely yeah part of um, what I do in, in all the modeling photographs I do is try and get to know the person a little bit about the person um, yeah. show them yeah, I'll take three or four photographs and show you how I think you could look better. Yeah. Whether it's lift your chin up or whether it's turn to the side or turn profile, um, you know, lift your chin a bit more, get a bit more light in your face. And, and then then hopefully I would win one shot, I can give you that one. Yeah. You know, yeah. I don't take 100 photographs of a person. I take two or three 
I've called it test shots. Show them what I need. Bang, the shot's done. Cool. End of story. Cool. And um, so can you tell us a little bit about the um, the books you've got out? You've got more than one, right? But your, ma your main one is the most recent one. Yeah, I mean, lots of different genders, as you know. Highly recommend it to people through my eyes is really my photographic scrapbook. I've mm -hmm. grown up in Wigan since 1960. Most of the photos were well, every photograph in there I took, but they were really from the 80s onwards. So um, I've got my first job in 77, 78 in the family business. Got a camera. So from then, um, I photographed buildings. I, I was actually quite agoraphobic as well, and mm -hmm. I couldn't go up to people, but give me a camera. And I'm a different person. I will talk to anyone, anywhere, if I've got a camera in my hand. So, Polar Pins, People Through My Eyes is the main book. Um, Face of the Wiccan was, again, really like a catalogue, and it was nearly 200 people that I photographed over four days. Yeah. Just before lockdown, I started another project, which was Musicians of Wiccan. So, mm -hmm. based on the same theme as Face of the Wiccan, um, but bring your instrument along. And let me try and show people who you are through, through music. And yep. obviously, as soon as lockdown's gone, I think hopefully we can get the music scene back together and the photography back together and we can finish that book. The others, I will tell you, obviously know that um, 2017, I was actually voted the Erotic Photographer of the Year. Mm -hmm. So, yep. totally different strings I bow, but yeah, um, it was I voted in by my peers as the Photographer of the Year. So. Again, I've worked with two, three hundred um, amateur models, but um, people off the street basically that want me to help them try and keep something sexy and erotic, but not pornographic. Yeah, again, yeah. so that's another skill you've got to bring into it. To what? Yeah, you know, it's the difference between uh, classical art and you know, a top shelf magazine. How? What's the difference, and how can you? distinguish a genre and, and get into that mm. get your model to understand what you're trying to do and get them to it but also remember though i've never actually asked a model to shoot for me they mm. will come to me i said i've seen yeah. your work i would like something like that for me yeah 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 um, which I, yeah I, your, your your photography you have a very distinct style as well so um i imagine word of mouth that must work quite well for you for getting like i guess like bookings and stuff yeah i mean and the normal, okay, I had a full-time job, which I had for, well, for various people for nearly 30 years as, as a mm -hmm. professional marketing manager in a multi-billion pound company. Yeah. Um, so the photography was a hobby, really. Yeah, yeah. Then in, on March the 1st, 2020, I was actually made redundant in a company reshuffle. Right, yeah. American company took over and was reshuffling all the managers, blah, blah, blah. I was made redundant on the 1st of March. So I thought, okay, now's a good time to set up my photography as a full-time business. Yeah. And go out for it. And then, obviously, 14th of March, we were in lockdown. So um, those plans didn't really ever come to fruition. Yeah. But they will be. Yeah. They will be. Year. So, you know, yeah. it will come back. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Um, so what are some of the, you know, some of the places you've exhibited? Because your work's been sort of shown here and there around town as well. Um, yeah, I mean, the face of the Wiccan was at the Mad Squirrel. We had a, an exhibition there over two days. Um, I did a lockdown art exhibition in the Wiccan Art Centre. Uh, the Bellevue, another published now, unfortunately gone, the Snug Bar. I had um, an exhibition of my uh, tattooed work. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Tattooed models. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we we set about doing a project, which again has never really had the time to put it together with um, another friend of yours, uh, Steve Colgan, mm -hmm. where we spent a couple of days in tattoo studios photographing people having tattoos. Mm. But it wasn't just a tattoo; the story behind the tattoo. Why have you got that tattoo? What does it mean to you? Yeah. Rather than again, it's more of a documentary about why people get tattoos and what they mean to people rather than the actual tattoo. Yeah. Um, I like <clears throat> the fetish stuff, I've exhibited in several galleries around London, the Menier mm. Gallery, gallery um, the Guild of Erotic Artists Gallery. I've had some work exhibited in Miami, some of my fetish work. So yeah, my, my stuff has gone around the world, so. Yeah, awesome. Um, um, I mean, 
Oh, what I think is really cool, as you said, you 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 um you won the award for your erotic photography as well. Um, what was what was that like? Because that must have been quite interesting. Bear in mind, bearing in mind, as you say, your your self taught and even the erotic photography work kind of came to you as well. So, what was it like to, to I guess, to get that that industry recognition? Okay, well, it, it my my work. Um, a friend of mine said your work is very raw. It, it calls mm. it raw, meaning you don't process, you you yep. see things as they are. Um, and I got into it again by accident. Uh, my brother's a musician. Yeah. Used to play, he was signed EMI back when he was 18, 19. I used to follow him around London, very heavy, Ramstein, Marilyn Manson type music. Cool. Used to play around all the venues around Camden and Northampton, all, all around the country. And I used to follow him around. And of course, that genre of people they, they were almost like partly glam rock but not glam rock it's industrial metal and i was meeting some fantastic people really really interesting people and i'd photograph them <clears throat> and um for the band really and a london magazine store london edge so i asked if they could use a couple of my photographs on their covers of the magazines that led to other magazines saying we really like your style would you photograph this model for me yeah and it, it just started flowing, work started coming in. People liked my style because it was so different. It is self-taught. I don't go with a conform, so I don't go with a standard yeah. rule of thirds and blah, 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 and never point up. And I've, I've got my own, I've developed a style of photography which I like yeah. rather than following conforms. Um, a good friend of mine, I'm not sure if you know, Gavin Watson, who photographed all the skins and punks back in the 70s, 80s, very, very famous now. But he said his style is flip. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah. Shoot what you see. Don't try and pretend. Don't use Instagram, Instagram filters. Let people see who you really are and they will see into the soul of the person you're photographing yeah. rather than some somebody fake. So, yeah, it's all come to me by luck, really. It's, you know, even my Wiccan book, the latest one, it, it, it's... That came about by sitting with friends that recently, say recently, within the last five, 10 years, moved to Wiccan, most of for uni, and said, oh, I wonder what Wiccan looked like before this, before that. And I said, well, I've got some photographs of that. Yeah. And I'd never thought about putting them into a book before. And um, they said, well, I'd love to see it. And so, well, look, if you put them in together a book, I'll buy a copy off you. Yeah. And again, and it, that's how it came about. Yeah, cool. So uh, how can people get a copy of, of that book? Okay, well, um, the only way it can be bought at the moment, because we can't get out, can't put in shops or anything like that, is through Facebook. There's, um, if you go Facebook groups, HW Street Life, that's why yeah. Street Life, HW Street Life, you'll see links to buy the books there. It's £20 plus a £3 delivery charge to anywhere in the UK. Yeah. So, um, and I've got... Not many, but I've got a stack of about 20 left in my home, which I can get out posters next day. So, cool. Yeah. And you've, you've, I guess you've had a couple of print runs on it as well, because you, you sold out quite quickly as well, I, I think, of your first edition of it. Yeah. Well, um, when people were saying I do, I thought, well, I'll get 10 copies, see how it goes. And then people were saying, oh, you're going to, I'll have a copy. I'll have a copy. So um, I said to my printer, as a local guy, I said, look, I might want up to about 100, but can I have like, for now because I yeah. had to buy them up front to get the price and I had to pay for them it's not like mm. a publisher that will pay for yeah. it for me um, and basically 100 copies went within five days yeah so nice. but yeah I'm on about third or fourth run now I think so and, um, and again that's without you being able to just go down to pubs and sell them at, and you know they're literally being sold through that one website at the moment yeah. through um, Highwick and Street Life it's just people seeing it Saying, up, yes, please, I'd love a copy. And some great stories coming back of people. I lived there, I remember that. And then yeah. well, people are now saying, have you got a photograph of this place or that place? And I think, yeah, I think I've got that somewhere. Yeah. So um, it's just a matter of going through my box and box of prints. Um, but the biggest job now will be, of course, going through all the negatives. I've gone through yeah. the easy parts, the prints. And now I've got to start looking at negatives, see yeah. what else I've got. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Yeah, I didn't even think of that aspect. Cool, cool. Yeah, and um, it's all thirty-five mil film. No, no, no prints. It's all just thirty-five mil film. Yeah, so yeah. It's not digital. 
Uh, and again, because I think just, you know, most modern photographers now, you would just be digital by default, wouldn't you as well? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but the nice thing is I, I use a digital camera in the same way as I would a 35mm because I'm yeah. classically trained, if you like, or classically learned 35mm black and white. I make a digital camera act like a 35mm camera. Yeah. Which, again, I suppose is another one of the things that just contributes to, you know, your own personal style and, yeah. you know, approach to photography. Yeah. Cool. And uh, just one last question to end on. Where can people follow you to find out more? I guess the HW Street Life. Yeah, Facebook. I think Street Life is the best. And from there, you can find links to, there's another one, which is Faces of Wickham. Mm -hmm. So hi, Wickham. Uh, sorry, Facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Faces of Wickham. Cool. And um, yeah, those are the two best things to follow me on. Cool. And, um, and again, once links are from there. And once things open back up and pick up again, hopefully people will be able to see you exhibiting again and out and about taking photos. You'll probably be at the Mad Squirrel. Um, Mad Squirrel, Antelope. Yeah, yeah. it's uh, good social venues. Um, yeah, I've I, I just used the places to meet people. They're nice places you can go in, meet people, talk to people. Um, of course, the art centre as well. And, you know, it's, yeah, we'll just see what happens. But you'll see me wandering around town with the camera usually. Yeah. And this guy's come up and say hello and um, pose for me. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much to Mark Page for joining us. You're listening to the Archer on 106.6 FM at Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for a little bit of music. So, this is Jordana Blake with You Shaped Hole. Uh, this is another original song, and it's called um, Silly Influential Pests. My body is a temple Somebody threw the key away <laughs> What's that you said? the sun come back today During the COVID-19 pandemic, our key workers will have experienced loss, trauma, mental strain, emotional difficulties, and many more factors which they will need time to recover from. 
Follyfoot Horses provide therapeutic sessions and a non-judgmental and natural approach to interventions using animal-assisted therapy. Follyfoot Horses would like to offer these therapeutic sessions to our local NHS and key workers for free after the COVID-19 lockdown is lifted, as we feel they will be most in need of some time to heal. But due to the lockdown closures, we have lost all of our income and we need your support to raise the funds we need to continue our work. All donations will be gratefully received. For more information about our services and to donate to our fund, please visit our website, follyfoothorses.org. Thank you. All your business questions answered. HW Bidco will be hosting a series of webinars for local businesses. Join our panel of legal, HR and finance experts who are giving away their advice for free to help businesses navigate the COVID-19 challenges ahead. For more information and to register, visit the website hwbidco.co.uk. We understand that everyday life is going to become challenging over the next few weeks and months, but we want to reassure you that the Wickham Sound team are here to inspire and entertain you with local, relevant programmes and information. We followed government advice and set our team up to work remotely. We have taken all the steps we can to keep our team safe so we can be here for you. Local businesses. Perhaps you have closed temporarily or have found a new and innovative way of working. If you want to reach customers with your message, get in touch with us today. We can get through this if we all pull together. Please stay at home. Stay tuned to Wickham Sound for the latest information and do get in touch with us to let us know how you're doing, if you'd like a song played or just want us to say hello to you. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it is time for this week's album review. So we're going to go over to Twanglin' Jack Ford in the Oak Shed for that. London Calling by The Clash. In the mid-70s, there was a move away from prog rock to much more harder faster rock and roll music which was played in pubs and you could feel that there was a change in the air and some very enterprising management companies like Malcolm McLaren and Vivian Westwood and Bernard Rhodes who got the clash together they jumped on this bandwagon they basically invented a fashion and sold a lot of records but some of it was absolutely brilliant and uh, I think London Calling by The Clash is an absolute classic. Obviously, everybody knows the title songs, but there's some other great stuff on here as well. Spanish Bombs, Lost in the Supermarket. Um, It's too many to mention. It was a double album originally, but it's a single CD. London Calling by The Clash. You've been listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. As always, you can find us on Facebook if you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound. You can also listen on Catch Up on Spotify, iTunes, various other platforms. Uh, I'm going to leave you with one last tune until next week. And this is The Ilk. So The Ilk is the band that I have with Twanglin' Jack Ford, our album reviewer. So enjoy. Hopefully you like it. It's from an EP that's coming out soon. Seven eight on their guitars in the city air on empty streets beneath the stars, Rock City air. It's always been this way. Musicians searching for somewhere to play in the city. Rock City air. In the city, rock the city, rock city, yeah. There must be a jukebox in every bar, and a radio playing in every car. Jukebox rumble, the beat goes on. In the city, yeah. One long party, one long song. Rock city, yeah. And as the sun goes down, the music's coming up from underground. In the city, rock city, rock city, yeah. In the city, rock city, rock city, yeah.
Rock City, yeah It's easy to find, you're already there Rock City is everywhere In the city, yeah On empty streets beneath the stars Rock City, yeah And as the sun goes down The music's coming up from underground In the city, Rock City, yeah In the city, Rock City, yeah. In the city, Rock City, Rock City, yeah. In the city, Rock City, Rock City, yeah. It's easy to find, you're already there. Rock City is everywhere.